wash machine. There's a little Bobby Anderson <laughs> lived down there, but I think he just trees. I think when we were digging, they found all kinds of stuff there. Here. <laughs> here it comes. Hi, Ho. How are you? About to freak out if this thing gets caught out on me. Hey. Chris. Yes, sir. Have we got the voting session agenda thing. I usually don't put these back in there, can you? Oh, you usually put me the top cover, doesn't it? Okay. Four o'clock, four o'clock. Oh, I'll give it to you between meetings now. That's fine, that's fine. That's, that's, we got time, yeah. We got plenty of time. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. So oh, easy. <laughs> Who's he calling? The governor. I left, and but Chris and them were still there. See, the governor at the, but I left. Governor's at the professional field, and we were there to ask. No, just well, he was there, and Chris is there, but I left. Bye. I saw memories left too. Right? He was right behind the wheel. Wow. <laughs> Is the meeting no? No. No, I have to leave. <laughs> we talked about that. I'm going to say for me, I thought that had been a time. wonderful subject. I wanted to go right into the sun. <laughs> oh, no, they're all. No, oh, no, 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 no. Green. We were told not to do that. Now, I don't want to be talking. Yeah, I can't. We're working on all day. Herman over there having us. Now, what do you do? I've got Billy on the phone. Okay. That's why I was going to put him right here. Was he going to conduct the meeting then? No, I am. Oh, you are? If, unless you want to. Well, I'll be glad to. We'll be out here Billy, about five there. minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna put you on the screen. Oh, move it on. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, all right. Well, uh, welcome to everyone that's here for the September 2nd Dawson County Board of Commissioners work session. Um, on our agenda, we do need to move item. Put your mouth on. We do need to move item uh, one to the bottom. Uh, the original presenter had a family emergency and can't be here. So uh, the presenter now is going to be just a little bit late, so we're just going to move that to the bottom if everybody's okay with that. You talking about Tommy's 
Tony. On yeah. The Tony's. Oh. The under first item under new business. Um, so, um, so we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation of the update to the subdivision regulations. Uh, who, who's, are you going to do that, Keith, or? Actually, Robbie, I just want to say real quick, uh, I want to thank, thank y'all, but I want to thank uh, our council and I want to thank our staff for the uh, update this week. It's been a rush to try to get it together. Um, we've had a public works has worked with us. It's been, uh, we actually had some revisions we had to work through yesterday afternoon. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for the hard work they put in this week. This is, my first time up here, um, I just want to make sure everything goes smooth. But Robbie's been working with this since the beginning. He knows more about the update than I do, so I'm going to let him speak of it. Um, if you've got any questions about uh, the private roads, public roads, maintenance program, uh, Denise is here from Public Works, and I'm sure she can answer any questions about that. They're more familiar with that, and they'll be the ones who are uh, actually presenting that when it comes into effect uh, for y'all when, when people want to convert. So I'll let Robbie get started. Thank y'all. Thank you, Keith. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's good to be back before you again. Um, I've got a little presentation here that we'll go through. Um, Will and, you uh, first, when you talk yes. about this, tell us why we're here about this, how we yes, got to this. Well, basically, <laughs> there was, um, is it, and this is on, right? Yeah, you, you have to ask. <clears throat> is it so, Thank you. So we're currently under a moratorium uh, for plats because we had some, some key issues in the old subdivision regs that needed to be addressed as far as platting procedures, when signatures are required and things like that. And um, so all of those issues have been addressed and, and that's why we're bringing this um, ordinance to you tonight to get started on getting this adopted so that uh, we can then have that moratorium lifted and any new subdivisions uh, will then be falling under the, the new regulations. Now, anything that's currently under construction now or being, or, or you know, platted now um, would fall under the old regs. Um, you know, we've got some that, that say um, public roads on the plats. Mm -hmm. and those are pretty well, they're gonna stay like that. But the new language for public private streets and everything is in the new document and it's clarified. And so uh, we shouldn't have any issues along those lines in the future. And, um, you know, give, we give you guys the opportunity to accept those roads when, when you deem it necessary and it not just be on a plat. So it's, you know, people think, well, my roads are public because it says so on the plat. So will, the, will they be private? Now, if we go with this, will they be counted as private well, if they're in a subdivision? It depends on the developer's intent and your willingness to take them in to the county system. Okay. Um, the developer can request that the roads be taken in and, and be public roads. They can be platted as public roads. Well, they would be, it, it would have to be on the plat specifically uh, calling for that but you would have the option um to say we're going to take these in or not it's okay. not just that it's written on the plat so therefore it is okay if okay. that makes sense just because well, it says it we don't believe it. exactly so let me ask you i'm sorry for getting started so well, we I, still just... have the opportunity as a board to make that decision where we want we want them to be private or public Yes, and and I'll explain all that as I as I get into that. So then at one time we first talked talked about this document. It was everything from now. It's going to be private roads. Mm -hmm. Well, everything from the adoption of this forward will be your option as whether or not so we still to have the option, public or private. We still have the option, right? Okay. Yes. Right. So, um, what are we updating? Uh, there's several several things in the ordinance that we're updating. Number one, the administrative authority. Um, it's clearly denoted in here what uh, the public works director and the planning director's authority is uh, in regards to plats and in regards to 
uh, workmanship and materials for roads and, and all that sort of thing. So that's very clearly laid out in here now. It's also clear in here now when the chairman will need to sign uh, a plat and when he won't need to sign a plat. And we'll get into that a little further on down the road. Um, as I mentioned, the duties of the planning director and the public works director are, are covered in here. We've also added some definitions um, uh, for subdivisions, technical definitions uh, that, that will, uh, when we're asking them for a certain standard, they all know what we're talking about. Um, and there are several new definitions in here. They should be highlighted. Uh, the, um, the planning authority and the approval procedures has been updated and the public private access language has also been updated. Now, any of this, if you want me to go into really specific detail, I can go to those specific pages and we can talk it through. But suffice it to say, we fixed these items. Um, continuing um, procedures for concept plans. You know, when we need a concept plan, what that means. Um, a lot of times people think, well, I've given you a concept plan, so you've approved my subdivision. And that's not true. Concept plan is a general idea of what it's going to look like, but then we have to take it and plug in all our regulations and our ordinances and make it work right. So concept plan is simply that, a concept. And we've made that very clear in the ordinance. Uh, the pre pre preliminary plat, excuse me, is basically the construction plans for the subdivision. So we have updated the submittal requirements and the uh, approval procedures on all that, the, the things that we'll be looking for at certain times uh, it is all listed in there, the, the specific technical requirements that the Public Works Department uh, will have is all laid out. Uh, again, uh, next, the final plat submittal and approval process has been um, clarified and uh, very succinctly laid out. Um, language about minor subdivision plats and then subdivision design. And that's, you know, anywhere from how you uh, the road names to how they connect to public streets, how the stormwater works together, maintenance responsibilities, um, and then eventually what it would take if someone wanted to have a road accepted into the county system. Um, moving on, a closer look. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. At plats, the plat approval procedures. Now, the planning director and the public works director will review submitted plats. Um, where there are no public uh, streets or public facilities, infrastructure, that sort of thing, they can approve it at that point. It doesn't have to come before um, the board and have the chairman sign it. Now, if they're adding new streets or new public facilities, uh, it would go through a compliance check, comments, certification from staff. The BOC would then see it. Uh, they can accept or reject the plat and instruct the chairman to sign it. And then the applicant would then record the plat. And there are further procedures on how that whole process of accepting and signing the plat uh, would work. Basically, um, you know, it would come before you guys to be accepted and the chairman would sign it, but it wouldn't be taken into the system until the public works uh, department, you know, took a look at the road, made sure it was, was built properly, made sure that the sub base and all that was installed correctly. And then they would make that determination. Yes, you've made up, met all these criteria. The board's already said we're good with, with taking it. So now you're part of our system because you built it right. So um, the signature would come before the final finishing of the road, but there would be checks and balances to make sure that the road is ready for us to take at that point. Um, the concept plan. 
that's submitted to planning and development. It's going to show the area where they're looking to develop. It visually describes the proposed land use, the zoning, the buildings, et cetera, labels the surrounding zoning so we get an idea of what is around it, um, indicates where they're wanting to access our roads or state highways, um, where water and sewer might come into the property at and that sort of thing and delineates what they're looking for as far as acreage for their lots. And it acts as a heads up for the planning and development department and other agencies. So it, it kind of gives us a, a first look before they submit an actual set of construction plans. Um, on to the preliminary plat, which again, as I said, is basically your construction documents. Um, it's reviewed for compliance um, with the county codes and other regulations. We're talking about lots, streets, utility layout, street widths, um, hydrology, um, all that, the, the grading and drainage, the um, erosion control plans, the mm -hmm. every bit and piece of the technical information that we need to make sure they're gonna construct that subdivision properly we will get at the preliminary plat stage. And it'll go through a plan review in the planning office where everybody makes comments and then they'll be given a, a, a grading permit basically to begin construction. Um, the final plat. <clears throat> so after the preliminary plat is approved within one year, the final plat is to be submitted with as built of what is actually there. It's reviewed by the planning director and the public works director. If roads are gonna be dedicated, the planning director and the public works director will report their recommendations to the board of commissioners. If y'all agree to that, the chairman would sign it. And at that point you can say, no, we, we don't agree with bringing this in. You know, that's your option at that point. Um, you can instruct them to go back and make changes if necessary. Um, but if you agree to it, the chairman signs it, and then they record it, the, the applicant would record it through the clerk of court's office. And it'll have statements regarding ownership, maintenance, HOAs, everything on that uh, will be, will be on that final plat. So it's very clear. <clears throat> Who's going to maintain the infrastructure, the you know, uh, the whole gambit of, of whose responsibility what is? So that's all laid out on that final plan. Um, finally, a little bit about conservation subdivisions. Um, I pulled out the conservation subdivision section and have drafted it to either be its own standalone ordinance or to go back in this ordinance uh, at uh, a later time. We're wanting to give some increased incentives for conservation. Um, typically, we're gonna look at probably having a two and a half unit per acre maximum density unless they want to provide us with more open space. And then there's a chart that will kind of, as they give more open space, we'll give a little more density, a little more, not a lot, but. So that's being drafted uh, right now. And uh, you'll have that within the next few months. And we can either put that back in the subdivision regs or have its own, have it as its own standalone document. Do so that's kind of a quick overview. Do you think it needs to stand alone? Or does um, it I, I'll leave that up to um, our um, council, whether or not they, they think it should be a standalone or whether we can stick it back in the sub -race. So right now, the way you're presenting it, conservation subdivisions are out. Yes, ma'am. They're out right now. Okay. I mean, they're not intended to be out forever. Okay. Just long enough for us to draft you. A good document. Um, I think that's one concern or points that were brought up from developers or builders that there was too many documents they had, too many places they had to look 
and we ran in some language difference in some of the documents. <clears throat> right. One reason we're here, I think, is they find it stated one way in one document and turn around and find another document mm -hmm. stated just the opposite. Exactly. So I mean, if we can get them in there sooner than later, I think it, putting it all in one document makes it a lot easier for a developer or, or a builder to come in. And the thing with the conservation subdivisions, in, in, in the document we're talking about now, the subdivision regulations, we're talking about plats more than anything. I mean, that's okay. what it's all about. Okay. Plats and how they build the roads. Okay. The conservation subdivision uh, regulations are going to talk about green space and and, and design <clears throat> guidelines to like if you look at the the example here, this is the same number of lots on both sides of the screen. Mm -hmm. One's a standard subdivision, I believe it's like fifty one lots. The other is a conservation subdivision. It's the same piece of land, but. Mm -hmm. The conservation subdivision regulations will help them build it uh, to to that higher standard clustering homes, smaller lot sizes, um, and more open space, more usable open space. The big thing right now that I see with the current conservation subdivision language is that all the junk land that they don't want to build on anyway yes. winds up being conservation. So we want to encourage them to go beyond that and actually put some good prime land in conservation for open play fields and that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at with conservation subdivisions. Is, is this going to affect like the RS2 and RS3 um, uh, zonings? No, you could still do RS2 and RS3. Um, just without the conservation regs, you couldn't make them conservation subdivisions. Okay, but, but um, that, that'll still be around? It'll still RS2 be around. And RS2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not changing any zoning categories. Okay. Uh, and like I say, the, the, the target area in conservation subdivisions is gonna be two and a half units per acre, but they could, that could vary depending on how much more open space they're willing to give. So, okay. you know, we could go up to, you know, two and three quarters or, mm -hmm three, not really much beyond that. But, you know, um, the more they're willing to give, the more we'll be willing to give as far as density. Any more questions? For, I got a, a well, question for- uh, Oh, are you feeling? Oh, go ahead, I'm not finished. Robbie in count. Because <laughs> I was reading through, uh, Ms. Angie, the- uh, so the private is mandatory. They have a homeowner association. Uh, how can we mandatory and enforce it and, and tell them what their dues are going to be? They might not collect enough to take care of the roads, but also there's subdivisions that's got <clears throat> homeowner associations that, that nobody is involved in. So how can we make it mandatory? They have one and set the amount that, to take care of those roads. Well, so two, two answers to that question. Um, we would do it through a condition or through the ordinance requirement itself. And that's not uncommon to say that you have to have a homeowners association anymore because you know, there's been so many times during recession where developers walk away mm -hmm. and, and subdivisions are just left, the roads never get built. So it's, it's become more and more common that that's in ordinances and also used as a condition of zoning. So I think there's not a problem with that and particularly with private streets, to the extent um, the developer does leave, there has to be some kind of orchestrated group or process for maintaining the roads because individual homeowners are not going to, you know, individually agree to chip in and, and handle it. So, but to your second part of your question about, you know, how do we um, regulate their homeowners fees? I don't think we can necessarily do that very effectively, um, but it's just setting it up with the purpose and intent of that what it's for and then you know and then have the bond for the for the roads as well so you know it's never going to be perfect because there's always going to be a way for something to fall through the cracks but this would be some steps that would um i think substantially protect the homeowners who buy into these situations but then right now on, on commercial property because we had something we addressed that had potholes and unsafe conditions we we went after the uh either the business owner or the whoever owned the whole complex but if we got a 
say we got a subdivision that becomes unsafe for school buses and public safety go in and just people in general dodging hose and running up on the sidewalk or through somebody's yard do we go after every homeowner yeah it's just not if they're inactive right well um it's hard to give a global answer i think it would be a case by case depending on how it was conveyed you know what the plat looks like but if there was a homeowner association that's just defunct um you know that would be a complicated situation i mean we could go after each individual homeowner i think that's where this new um special tax district situation that we're working mm -hmm. on to put into place we're talking about again later tonight would come into play where i think essentially you know the county may have to pursue even <clears throat> A taking over of it and then a taxing back to pay for it. If yeah, that's what we're going to ask that to start off. I just don't want to see them all go private because I mean, if you're building a what we what we want is when people's ask for this affordable housing and keep some of the young people here living in the county, and they might be paying homeowners do just to keep the flowers up at the front entrance. Mm -hmm. They're not collecting enough money to pay the roads, and they become <laughs> unsafe. Our, our statement in the first, this, this policy ordinance says to promote health, safety, and general welfare of the present and the future inhabitants of the county. So if we go all private and, or don't take them in, who's got, who's liable for the safety and the welfare of other people? I mean, I think the goal would be in these situations as new development comes on is that they're building it to county standards mm -hmm. and then they dedicate and hand us perfectly pristine roads, you know, mm -hmm. with, with appropriate bonds to cover, you know, any any uh, wear and tear that we need to you know have repaired right after construction. And then we proceed from there. I mean, that's the ideal situation, because frankly, private roads, it, there's so many ways that goes wrong, as you mentioned. Oh, yeah. And I then, mean, uh, you know, some subdivision can afford it. Well, we got some subdivisions, but I know there's one that's probably going to come to us with this tax district. They're three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar houses. They don't have the money in there to pay the roads, mm -hmm. even with their homeowners. I mean, some of them we, mm -hmm. you know, we can yeah say these are private. <clears throat> they're they've got you know their full subdivision, all of them or so, and they got big houses in there, and they're paying big dues. They can pay take care of the roads, but then some of them yeah. are not going to be able to. Well, you're going to yeah. take. I mean, personal responsibility in general. I mean, if you know that you're buying into a subdivision, I'm, I live in a subdivision where we got to do our own roads. I mean, and that's, that's some of personal the, responsibility. Of, but I think it's our responsibility. You know, we're, we're, wanting we're, loss, it. we're wanting T loss passed and, and sploshy <coughs> passed. And the first thing it says on both of those <coughs> is roads mm -hmm. and improvement. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really, I just thought, you know, I'd like to see us make the decision on all of them. Mm -hmm. And to reiterate also, there are very rigorous standards in here for road construction oh, yes, and, and very rigorous um, protocols that public works will go through to make sure it's being done correctly, you know, from corings to, um, you know, the, the, the national standards for construction and everything. So it's going to be the roads that are developed in the future will be the most well-designed and well-looked at roads that we've had in this county. Mm -hmm. And they're bonded, right? Things like that, <clears throat> and, and hopefully they last twenty years. Mm -hmm. And that okay. goes for if someone comes in with no intentions of turning the road over to the county. The uh, standard for that private road are the same as if they were going to. Is that the correct? Act, the exact same. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we and still have the ability to make that decision. Yeah. Right? As you pointed out earlier. Yes. Yes. Yeah, to yeah. your point, uh, Commissioner Dooley. Before the uh, first um, uh, development regs were done, in the county, private roads or, or private developments that, that going beyond the roads itself, uh, detention ponds, retention ponds, drainage conveyance systems, you know, the roadways themselves um, that were considered private or were designated as private, there was no control. The county didn't control any of that. So you could have offsite drainage issues, you could have neighbor drainage issues, you could have roads falling apart and all that. So the intent behind the original uh, uh, ordinance was to be able to build them to a public standard so that in the future, if those developments, such as Commissioner Gaines just mentioned, decided well, we want it to become public, that it was built to that public standard at that time mm -hmm. and that public works would be able to look at it and then 
look at some of the maybe some of the repairs that needed to be done or whatever they could bring it up to an acceptable level to where there was still some life expectancy or integrity left in that particular system so uh this is just a a way as you just mentioned a minute ago about being able to put additional uh methods in there in order to make sure that these private entities uh, are at least built to a standard that may be acceptable later on down the road and would would um, would help support uh, any neighborhood or, or any system. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up to you. And that, that brings up a good point. You know, we require them, we require them to have retention ponds now, but the county doesn't take over that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a responsibility. That's the correct. HOA has to carry that burden and personal responsibility of the people that live there to pitch in. When that retention pond gets overgrown, they have to address that because mm -hmm. uh, that's a health and safety thing. So. I mean, we don't take in retention ponds, uh, but yeah, we I've, require them to build them to a certain specification right. the same way. And I've had numerous occasions where I went out in previous <laughs> positions here to people's property that have an indention in their backyard and have to tell them, that's the detention pond for your subdivision, and you have to maintain it because it's on your land. So this addresses a lot of that, too, to make sure that it's in easements and it's, it's not solely on one person's property and that sort of thing. So. Mm -hmm. There's a joint responsibility rather than one homeowner right. all of a sudden realizing I've got to maintain the detention pond for the whole subdivision. Because that's something you're not going to know. If you're behind a house in a subdivision and you've never been around that type of stuff, right. you're not going to know that you're yeah. going to have to keep up the retention pond. Well, they're pond. supposed to disclose it, but supposed to, are they yeah. going to? Yeah. yeah. And uh, hopefully this will help with some of that. Are there any more questions for Robbie? Or? Well, if they're platted as public roads, are we do we have to take them into our no. system? No, the, the the language on the plat will be as such that they they may be asking you to take it in. Yes, but you don't have to, and then that language would have to be changed on that plat okay. to say private streets, basically. So okay. you'll, and that's the the process of of you reviewing it once it has the internal review from staff, you get the chance to look at it and you get the chance to say, oh yeah, we'll take it in. Mm -hmm. And it's printed on there and all Billy has to do is sign it. Or you say, no, we don't want it. Go back and change this where it says private. And you know, then you can proceed. Mm -hmm. So it's up to y'all. It's your call. Who's gonna present this to us? Does that come from planning or public works? I'm kind of the plat would probably come from planning uh, with some technical help from public works if there needed to be some answers. Any more questions? Just the last comment I'll make um, is that the next step, unless Robbie tells me differently or uh, would be for us to announce a public hearing um or go ahead and proceed with advertising for public hearing we do still have that moratorium that expires coming soon so i think at this point yeah. unless there's any substantial questions um there is there was a lot of changes made even just recently so mm -hmm. we'll get you a cleaned up copy to, for everybody to look at mm -hmm. but between now and the um, public hearing time you'll have time to do that of course at the public hearing we can make any changes we need um but if we want to still maintain that current moratorium deadline that we need to continue moving in earnest so if that means well, we just people. need to meet move tonight to to vote session to move this to a public hearing. Well, we could certainly do that. Yeah, I mean, that was my understanding. That well, it, me too. To meet the time time timeline, we wouldn't be moving it to to vote on anything except for moving public it to hearing. a public, public hearing. To call for public hearing. call for a public hearing. Exactly. Are we are we holding up any developers right now? Developments? There's several that are ready to go. So no, not get, some that was already in the process. No, anybody finished. that's in process now is, is going through process. Okay. This is just holding up anybody new coming in. Oh, okay. okay. And I noticed, no asking what page, there was an article 10 mm -hmm. that it just decided it said reserve. That's conservation. Okay. That's the conservation section. Okay. So, and it's it's marked as reserve, so we can either stick it back in there okay. or just leave it out completely. Okay. All right. Any more questions? I'm finished. You're finished? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, I have a hard time with it. This is hard for me to understand. <laughs>
Well, if we can answer any more questions or clarify anything, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll be glad to You better to not to tell you. me that. No, you can call me anytime. I'll, I'll do my best to explain it. So, so thank I, you very much. So I think with thank that in mind, you. then we would move it to the voting yeah. session as a new number eight, I mm -hmm. guess, yeah. under new business. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. All right. Um, next, since we've already adjusted the agenda here, we'll move on to New business item two, pre uh, presentation of request to conduct fundraiser to benefit emergency services. Thank Thompson. you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Um, brought this before the uh, board last year, uh, and this is essentially the gun raffle that uh, we partnership with the Woodman of America. This was a very successful event uh, for us last year. Miss Alex Williams, she's here tonight. It's been a it's been a blessing for our department because uh, not only pulling this event off last year that was able to bring about $20,000 into the fire department to be able to purchase um, additional equipment and we were able to purchase thermal imaging cameras last year so that way all of our med units have those now. But just today she presented us with a check uh, to be able to purchase an automatic defibrillator. So again, she's uh, constantly um, helping one defibrillator. That's a lot of money. But yeah, $1,385. Thank so, you. Uh, again, my hat's off to Alex for the hard work, but just kind of the background. Um, the Modern Woodman of America is the nation's third largest fraternal benefit society. Uh, they work with their local communities and volunteer projects that make a difference where the members live, work, and play. Alex has approached us again about raising money for the fire department. This event, as I said, was very successful in 2020. And we did kind of put it together during COVID times. And it was, uh, you know, it was still was very, very successful. Um, with that, it's the 31 gun raffle. The tickets are $40. Uh, they'll be sold up to December 1. Um, and the tickets will begin to be sold October 15th. So uh, this year, I'm also pleased, if you remember last year, uh, the guns were provided by Freedom Mills in Forsyth County. This year, we've partnered with a local business, the Appalachian Armory. So with that, I do have a copy. I'll just kind of pass it around. This will be the actual uh, guns that are wrapped off before the 31 days. And with that, Myself and Alex will answer any questions that the commission may have. I don't need to look. I don't win. I bought tickets. <laughs> I'm about to say, I don't know how you can call it successful because I didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> what was successful to me? I don't even know anything about guns, so we didn't. Here, I don't answer. Here, I don't. Uh, I never they can have a tank on yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any, Where do any... you get the tickets? So she'll, she develops the tickets. She has another vendor. Um, and then she'll get them to us, and then we begin the advertising. The other nice thing is Appalachian Army is also going to advertise, advertise and sell for us as well. So they're really a, a local business helping us out. So we're they're very, right very, here in town, aren't they? Yes, ma'am, that is. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you for yeah. your commitment and dedication. I think that was a cool thing. We started out last year, and now we have an annual event all of a sudden, and it's going to cost me a lot of money, apparently. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you got my credit card on file. Why are you being we nice do take Venmo. taking all that money? Just for the record, we do take Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I know that we did this, uh, you know, January, February, March of, of this year. Uh, and we're moving it this year to the weekend to work a little bit better around Christmas. So each year it would be around this time. We want to be quite busy. Any more questions? All right, we'll move on to item three, presentation of request to waive facility fee for the develop, uh, Department of Public Health uh, Emergency Services Director, Danny Thompson. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our local public health department, uh, Ms. Allison Ward, who's now our mm -hmm. local uh, department health nurse for Dawson County. She reached out to me uh, probably about uh, seven, eight days ago uh, of regarding being able to find a facility to administer the third booster for the vaccine. And with that, obviously one of the options that was on the table was veterans, but Matt 
has some programs that start there about 3.30 in the afternoon. So it was kind of cutting a little bit into that time. So Alice and I kind of came together. I presented her with the community room there at Fire Station 2. Um, and she and I did a site visit. She has uh, asked that we uh, utilize that. So basically what we're asking of the board is to waive the fee that's typically associated and give them permission to go ahead and use that. They're estimating starting mid, late September, given the third dose. So obviously when supplies come in, uh, right now we're asking that it be approved for a period of six months. Obviously, if if everything's taken care of before then, then you know the, they'll back out. If we need it for a longer period, then I will come back before the board and ask again just for an extension uh, on that, again, to be able to provide that to the community. And with that, I would like to try to move that to tonight's voting session, if it's okay with the board, just so the Department of Public Health can begin to plan, get some logistics taken care of in stage. And I'll answer any questions and Allison can answer anything that I don't have a question. What, your name is what? Allison. Uh, yeah, Ward. Ward. Did you take Janelle's place? No, I took uh, they were sharing the nurse manager <laughs> You may remember uh, Jessica Baker. Yes. And Jessica Okay. And how much would the fee be? I, I don't want to charge one, but I'm just curious. Does anybody know? Two hundred bucks. Yes. We, we redid that at one point. Yeah, it, yeah. it goes through parts. Of it, so yes, right. I know. Fifty dollars. How much? Fifty dollars. Is, is there not a way, just from an efficiency standpoint, to me? I mean, it, it, this is kind of a no-brainer. Why can we not give county manager authority to make these decisions instead of bringing them to us? I, mean, I love that idea. <laughs> He's, he oversees the day-to-day -day operations. I couldn't agree with you more. Don't jump, don't jump through the microphone. Yeah, there's some health departments. I mean, we're I don't want to steal we provide thing. them a building, and we're building them another building, and they're in Dawson County. I don't see why. It's... To me, any any of our own business, any of our own government should we should allow them the management abilities to take care of that. In my opinion, yeah. and that can be reported on the county manager's report. Well. Yeah, I mean, is that is the reason case. why it's here is because it's because of some Feet. ordinance we have in place for because fees. there's a fee that, associated with it, right? Yeah, fee so what, what would we legally need to do to move forward beyond just this conversation? Does the county, county department have to rent that too? No, I don't think a county department typically do it because the state board of the board of health has that state component. I think okay. they're treated yes a little yeah. bit differently, but um, I don't know exactly what the ordinance says in terms of how you handle it. Um, it, it about waivers or anything? Does it say anything specifically about that? It's, it's rented actually by Parks and Rec. Right. So if we have a second in between the meeting, we could maybe take a look at that because you yeah. could just, if it's as simple as um, I hope it might be in the ordinance, and it could be that you could just make a corollary motion tonight that in the future to authorize the county manager to waive fees for any other governmental departments. Yeah. But let me eyeball it just to make sure there's not some process that we need to make sure that we need to go back and amend the ordinance. But it right. might be that we can handle it by motion. Policy states the fees. Only one group people that can waive the fees are for. It okay. does state that. I, I the ordinance that says that. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. we, we can look at it. Yeah. Okay. It may require an ordinance amendment then if it's right. actually in the ordinance and not just practice. So we'll take a look at that on the break. Mm -hmm. But you questions. would include that in the county manager reports so we would know that it was taking place. Is yes, that what you're yes, saying? Yeah, for any other... I just like to know what's going on. That's the only thing. And when it's going on. <laughs> yes, and we always want you to be aware of what's going on because obviously the citizens here are going to. Going to ask you oh, yes. if you're able to provide good information to them. Exactly. And that could be included in the key indicator report as we do with signed contracts by the county manager right now. 
So it can be a part of that document. So you have all those documents as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Any more questions for Chief Thompson? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, move on to item four, discussion of requests by LJ Telephone Company to provide cable television services to potential su subscribers in Dawson County, County Attorney. Thank you. Um, we got this request in last week to the county. Essentially, it's asking to, to serve as a franchisee <laughs> for the county cable. <laughs> And there's a process for this. Um, we went ahead and put it on the agenda because they asked us to do that. Um, and it came so quick that it took us that time to look at it. But in looking at it, that's that's what the request is. So they don't have an existing relationship with the county. Um, the county charter does have franchise regulations in place um, and specific application procedures. So my recommendation is, um, you know, we wanted to provide this to you for your information. But my recommendation would be that we um, communicate with ETC and explain the process and ask them to submit the required information for review and consideration. And then you will see this back in the future, assuming they provide what's necessary to basically apply. Um, so I think there's no action needed tonight on this, um, but we will communicate with them by letter after this meeting, if that suits you. Did I read that that's primarily in the Western part of the county or was that something else yeah i think that's right yeah etc's footprint is mm -hmm. predominantly exactly. just in the well and you have some lines in western um part of the county i don't know if the actual lines are there but that's the only place that they would be uh, because it, it's proximity to where their main lines are at and it says cable tv do we know if they're wanting to provide any high-speed internet with that or have they got that far yet i'm well, not sure it, it was a very skeletal request there's discussion of that excuse me yeah but, but i think that needs to be addressed yeah. in more detail but they, they, we've had meetings about, about that, that. Yes. yeah you, you've just, had meetings with just recently see? yes ah, okay then yes. we may need to hear what you know <laughs> mm -hmm. before we go forward yeah because that would be you know that'd be great if that was maybe that's what they're asking for this for if that's you know Mandy, you were there. Yeah. Can so, they? Yeah. Can they show us on that document the map? They had a, They had a map. They have a map. Yeah. So and they they were going to use AEMC's lines. Is that correct? <laughs> to do, for the broadband. Yes. Well, I think part of that document, if they'd show us that map, that way if somebody asks, us, we yeah. tell them where's that. Mm -hmm. But they're not in No. Just a proposed service area. Yeah. yeah. So those are all the things we need. Um, so we'll be bringing that back to you. Okay. Any more questions for the county attorney on that? All right, we'll move uh, back to item number one, uh, presentation of request by Development Authority of Dawson County for the renewal of the Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act concerning Pete's of Dawsonville revenue bonds. Yes, and thank y'all so much for moving this for me. No while problem. I was running over here. Um, Tony, since his apologies, he was going to be here tonight to present this to you, but he had a death in the family, so he is out of town. Um, but there's really not much of a presentation. You approved this resolution back in September of 2020, um, simply by tax law it expires after 12 months. So as you can imagine, working with HUD and the federal government trying to get these through is taking a little bit longer than they had anticipated. So we're really just asking for a renewal of the existing resolution that you have already signed and approved. Are you implying the federal government is slow? I'm on video. I'm not doing that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I will. No, but HUD, HUD has, I mean, they've just been slow with not having people oh, in offices and, and things Are like they that, making so. any progress at all? This well, we thought we were approved? having a groundbreaking a couple months ago. Oh, you <laughs> then, did? Well, that was when it was originally scheduled, I think. But we, we're we really at the brink. They're talking about um, us approving the bonds the 15th or 16th of this month if all goes well. So we really are at the brink oh, okay. of getting it. And then once all the documentation is done, then they should start construction. I think it's about 35 days or so. So this has been going on a while. It has been going on a little <laughs> <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> Any questions for uh, Mandy about this? Is that something we need to move? I think so. I think. Yes, I Is think that, from what Billy was saying, yeah, we'll just move it to voting move it session to voting tonight. tonight. Okay. <clears throat> Since we're up against a deadline. 
right. Thank Good. you. Thank yep. you. Uh, item number five, the county manager report. Yes, sir. Thank you. And good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, the technology and streaming upgrade of courtroom A, B, and D has been delayed until at least December as a result of a global chip shortage. Uh, and along with that, uh, due to the COVID kicking back up, we are starting to see material shortages, construction materials, uh, vehicle parts, and manpower, those kind of things as we've all been hearing about. Um, so uh, some of our projects uh, due to material delays and all may be extended. Um, we'll be working with contractors on that, but I did want to let you know on that, that front. Uh, the county offices will be closed on Monday, September the 6th for the Labor Day uh, holiday. And uh, uh, last item I had on here with a heavy heart, the splash pad at Rock Creek Park. The final day will be Monday, September the 6th. <laughs> so uh, if you want to get in there and get on the splash pad, you got to do it before Monday. <laughs> so. How many times did you take advantage of the splash pad this year, Dave? <laughs> well, <laughs> the kids love it, don't they, Matt? They time. love it. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You're just missing that. I'll take my kids. I just wonder right. how much he's taking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Matt, the fire chief says he can bring the new ladder down there for backup. That's probably water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that concludes my report, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions yeah. I may for you. Any questions for the county manager? All right. Uh, item number six, county attorney report. Um, I do not have a public report. Thank you. Okay. Executive session. Um, I do not have anything particularly that I need from you unless you want updates on any of pending matters. Um, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. It's a first time. I know. I'm rather so not excited. sit in a room together, then well, we can just uh, yeah. <laughs> we can move right along and reconvene for voting sessions. All right. Well, that seems good. I don't know if I know how to close out a meeting where we don't go into executive session for the work session. I don't think I've done one. Just take a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Do we have to do that? I don't think no. so. Establish where adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't need to turn our microphones off. It's working. Too. All right. Sounds good. <laughs>